As you can readily tell, we are not in contact with the enemy all the time, but when we are, dramatic incidents occur which, since I was involved and remain unscathed, probably would interest you. Let me relate one of them that occurred in the Bulge. The town of Oberwapik is in a valley between two hills, on each of which is a road. Ollie's and my tank were located on one of those roads near the crest of the hill and adjacent to two houses in which a squad of infantry was quartered. We had pulled into this position late at night. Throughout the night, we could hear German tanks on the other hill across the valley. When dawn came, we could see no hind vehicles, but could spot some men in foxholes. These were quickly put out of action by our artillery. Things quieted down and we had assumed that the enemy had partied, and often used words stemming from the French word partir, when a forward observer spotted some hinds trying to set up mortars in a woods on the right of us in the valley. Artillery lay down on them and so did Ollie. Suddenly Ollie yelled, Tanks, Johnny, hind tanks, get the artillery. One of the houses blocked my view, but I shouted to the telephone man in the house, and as I did, saw Ollie's tank belching out armor-piercing shells. I was about to try to maneuver my tank into a position so that I could help in the action when I spied a number of German infantrymen in white camouflage uniforms surging through the valley. They were clay pigeons from a tank's coaxial 30 caliber machine gun, and I can even see their bewilderment as Tom, my gunner, fired into them. Naturally, I was focusing all my attention on the Germans and helping Tom guide into them. It was pure luck that caused me, for some reason, to look back up to my left towards the crest of our hill. Tom claims that I first yelled, oh my god, but at any rate, I did shout HE, or high explosive, and grabbed the power traverse switch to turn my turret and the gun barrel around to the left. For bearing down on us, and at the time I saw him not 40 yards away, was a hind half-track with a German officer crouched on its hood, hand grenade in hand. The power traverse worked, my loader was quick in getting the HE shell in, and Tom was accurate both with our cannon and machine gun. In no more than 15 seconds the half-track had been put out of commission. The Uber lieutenant had only suffered relatively minor shell fragment wounds, and the Heinz hands were up in the air. In no time at all, I was out of the tank, carbine in hand, waved the German crew into the house where the infantry was. That was the most intense moment we had, but for the next two days, we had to deal with more counterattacks. My memories of that time are fitful sleeping, constantly disturbed by one of my crew, shaking me and whispering, here they are again, and then long periods of listening and watching, and occasionally seeing and shooting. 